Hi, I'm Dave Feinlieb here with another episode of Big Data TV brought to you by BigDataLandscape.com. And today I'm speaking with Bob Tennant of Recommind, and we'll be talking a little about what your company does. Nice to be here. Great. So uh, tell us how you started the company. You have a pretty interesting story. Yeah, I guess it's um, a real startup story. Uh, the company was founded by a couple of postdocs at Berkeley and um, a student with a lot of gumption. And uh, at the time, which was um, in late 2000, they uh, had a lot of ideas, but not a lot of uh, knowledge about how to put them into practice in a company. Mm. And I got put in touch with them through a friend of mine, um, started off giving them some advice, and then um, ended up seed funding the organization. But the thing that was interesting about that period was it was in the middle of the dot-com meltdown and uh, not exactly a an easy time to either raise funds or to, to sell product. But we were able to um, find a few markets that made sense for us, and we have cash flowed the operation since uh, the company got started. So really a bit of an old school story. We, uh, we have a business now that's just done a, a little north of 70 million last year, and uh, we've got that under cash flow the whole way. So Very impressively done. Thank you. Uh, talk a little about what the company does and who the customers are. Um, we basically have a platform for managing and analyzing unstructured information. And so the modern terminology for that is really big data. Mm -hmm. um, and if you think about what big data means, um, I don't like that as a term for a technology. There isn't any technology that you can point at and say that piece of technology is a, a big data technology. But what you can say is that um, it, the term reflects a real problem that has arisen over the course of the last decade, and that is that data has piled up. As it's piled up, it's created both a problem and an opportunity. The problem is, is that it's piled up, mm. and now you have to manage it. The opportunity is that because you have it lying around, um, that allows you to do analysis that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to do if that data had never been collected. And so there's a lot of opportunity to um, take advantage of the data that you have to be able to improve sales and lower risk and all the kinds of business benefits that you'd like to bring to bear. So if you think about, say, a particular customer example, what's, how would a customer use your product today? It's a, it's a good question. And typically what we find is that customers like to try and um, utilize us in a variety of different ways. And so we often get uh, customers who are come to us for one product that um, we might sell. We build um, several different product lines on top of our platform. Mm -hmm. um, and so they might come to us for one problem, uh, say information governance or helping to deal with response to regulatory investigation or to um, a lawsuit. But in the process of doing so, they take the data that they have into our platform. And once they've got it in the platform, it then makes that data available for further analysis. And so um, and, typically... And what are the sort of kinds of insights that someone might get? And they've got all this data, they process it, and then they go, aha, here's, here's what I've learned, or here's what I would do differently in my business as a result. Sure. So um, one example might be uh, in financial institutions, a lot of different financial institutions enter into what are called OTC derivatives trades. We all heard about them mm -hmm. from the financial crisis. Right, right. Um, and it's sometimes difficult to understand what your exposure is in the event that certain events happen in the outside world. So if somebody that you're a trading partner of um, gets downgraded by a rating agency or goes bankrupt, what, what happens to you? Mm -hmm. um, and so we have one product line that can help folks understand that kind of a situation. Mm. Um, and that's analysis that's being done on information that's been collected. Um, Another kind of example that I think everybody can probably relate to is the improving of the customer relationship and marketing process. So um, everybody, I think, still gets at some point uh, solicitations for different kinds of financial products. Sure. We used to get the credit card things 10 a day, and maybe it's down to one a week now, but we still get them. Right, right. Um, I sometimes get those right after I have finished uh, yelling at my bank because they've screwed something up. <laughs> yeah, and not, not terrific timing. <laughs> not terrific timing. Yeah. 
And the reason that that happens is that the marketing management system, which has sent out the solicitation to me, is not uh, tied in to the customer call center application where my rant was just recorded, mm. nor is it tied into um, any other kind of CRM system that uh, they might have, or the website. Um, and I may just have clicked around on the website looking for uh, a mortgage product. Mm. So in that circumstance, they've sent me a solicitation for the wrong product at the wrong time. Um, if they had instead waited two weeks and then sent me a solicitation for a mortgage application, they might have actually been able got to you. got that, some business from yeah, me. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's a performance improvement on the sales and customer relationship side, um, that it really is a big data kind of an application because it's tying together very large quantities of information from a variety of different systems and then doing analysis um, by tying together that information to be able to say, hey, we should really wait on this and um, use a different product. Is okay. That, yeah, well, that's great. That's great. So such a great story around uh, bootstrapping your company to $70 million in revenue uh, and uh, sort of um, being at the right time and the right place around big data and unstructured data, sounds like. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't appreciate that about big data. Um, the term is being used a lot these days, mm -hmm. uh, at least in Silicon Valley. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't really understand what it means. What people need to know about big data as a term is that, as I said earlier, there's a real problem that comes uh, out of this, which is the data has been piling up, mm -hmm. and it's now piling up at a faster rate. But not all data is created equal as it comes to this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so. And, and what does that mean, exactly? So the, the data that is piling up quickest is unstructured data or semi-structured data. And what that means in English is basically text. Okay. So as text builds up, you need to be able to um, manage it and analyze it, as I was describing earlier. But it's not as easy as saying, hey, I've got a big database or I have a visualization tool to help you look at this stuff. Um, because unlike in a database where the database schema provides essentially a bit of a map to tell you where to look when you want to find a particular piece of information, in um, the unstructured context or in the text context, um, there is no such schema for any given uh, piece of information. And so what you have to do is to try and understand at a deeper level what's happening semantically. And so what Recommind does is really to marry up uh, a very highly scalable system for dealing with unstructured information. And the kind of database you need for doing that is different than um, what you would utilize for online transaction processing. Um, but it also marries that up with a very deep knowledge of machine learning, which is the roots of the company and where our postdocs were doing their research, um, to help understand what the key pieces of information in the sea of textual stuff is. Um, and once you understand the key pieces, then you can put that into applications for further use, or you can provide it to um, business intelligence applications to make sense of, or you can feed it elsewhere. Um, but that's very different from dealing with the traditional structured data that most people that are familiar with. That goes in a with. database. Exactly. OK, great. Well, maybe we can wrap up by talking about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, and just take a step back and you know share some thoughts with my audience on how entrepreneurs should think about bootstrapping and uh, building real revenue-based companies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so from a, a business standpoint, um, we've built Recommind for the long term. And if you're building for the long term, um, you have to build without a particular financial outcome in mind. Um, and so you have to build a real business. And the key to building a real business is to focus on who's actually going to pay you for the thing that you're providing them. Right. Um, I actually don't think this business thing is all that hard. Um, you find out what people want to pay money for, you build it, you give it to them, and they give you money for it. <laughs> Sounds easy. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is a yeah, lot yeah. easier than I think some people think sometimes. Um, and do you think it's sort of staying focused is the key? Is it finding the real customer pain point? What's kind of been the key to your success in building this business? You have to understand what people are actually willing to pay money for. Um, so you can talk about 
lots of grand ideas in a room with folks, um, and many times they'll say, yeah, that's a really great idea, but they may not actually be willing to write a check. Um, so the first thing is to um, understand your market and understand what people are actually going to be willing to pay for um, and to what degree they're going to be able to pay for it. The second thing um, is related, and that is in order to grow the business, especially if you're bootstrapping it, you need to maintain tight financial discipline, um, which you get, at least on the revenue side, out of understanding who's going to be buying your, your product. But it also means that you have to keep a tight rein on expenses. Okay. Um, and so I think those two things are the key to um, building a business in a more traditional fashion. If you service your customer well, you give them what they need, and they're willing to pay for it, um, you can go a long way combining that with uh, keeping a tight yeah. line on your own expenses. Yeah, Great. Well, such a great story um, of really building the company, as you said, for the long term. And uh, I really appreciate your thoughts on unstructured data. So thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, it's uh, been a pleasure. Uh, Dave finally here again with another episode of Big Data TV.